Okay, so thank you very much, Caroline. Um, so before I start, I really just want to thank the people because I may forget at the end. So I really, really want to thank you, Caroline, for organizing this and sharing the session. I want to thank all the panelists uh, who um, are here today to answer to your questions with me, all the people actively involved in Protobench. And of course, I want to thank you all of you who are listening to us uh, and are, are interested in the project. So I'm going to present Protobench. Um, and first, I cannot present it without uh, giving a word about the European uh, Bioinformatics Community for Mass Spectrometric mass spectrometry, sorry, it's UBKMS and um, everything started there. So this community um, is built to uh, create some place to discuss um, data analysis of mass spec data on mostly proteomics. And um, we organize uh, workshops and uh, yearly events. And we also coordinate uh, research and projects such as uh, Proteobench. And UBKMS is an initiative from the European Proteomics Association, uh, UPA. And you can find a lot of information on the, our website. Uh, but so within UBIC, uh, there is a bunch of uh, people who are a bit more involved in Proteobench. And it's actually now we are quite a few. I think that we are 40 people uh, kind of seeing it from afar. Uh, and then, of course, uh, some of us are more involved, and this includes the panelists. And you can see uh, on um, this slide a picture of us uh, at our kickoff meeting in person in Copenhagen uh, one year ago. And it was uh, funded by the Danish Data uh, Science uh, Academy. And uh, there are two coordinators, uh, and currently it is uh, myself and uh, Robin, uh, who is going to uh, do the live demo um, in a few minutes. And so everybody can, can join, and it can be just very punctually, but it can also be for more active participation or, or long term. So uh, what, uh, why did we uh, start working on Protobench? Uh, and this uh, came from the fact that uh, most, of all, most of us work with proteomics data analysis workflows. We use them or we develop them. And um, there are many uh, workflows that are available for analyzing uh, mass spec data. And I don't know why it goes super fast. It's not me. Uh, let me take uh, this. Um, so there are many available workflows for analyzing MS data, and uh, some of them are very high complexity. And it's really difficult to actually know how they compare uh, and how they perform and uh, have an idea of which workflow to pick for what data. So many groups compare workflows in-house. Some comparisons are made public, but not all of them. And actually, I really think that it's uh, it's really amazing that people uh, do make comparisons public because it's actually very hard work and it's um, it's literally reward uh, sometimes. Um, but when they are made public, uh, they are frozen, so it's not possible to add new workflows in this set of comparisons. So we wanted to basically create a space where people can work together. And in this space, sorry, we want to be able to discuss uh, how to compare uh, software tool performances. And we want to perform the comparisons in a homogenized fashion. And this should allow the continuous comparison of data analysis workflows used by the community. And this is Protobench. So we started this quite recently. It's the first time that we present it in such extent. Um, we are not done. There is still a lot of work to do. Um, for the moment, it looks like this. Uh, and uh, you can see the welcome page. And on the side, uh, the plan is to have several modules. And today, we present only one. That's the only one that is uh, ready. But we are working very actively to, to, have, to launch more modules very soon. Uh, and the idea is that each module would be dedicated to a specific comparison with a specific data set. Um, so the first one um, is uh, for comparison of software tools for DDA quantification. And we work at the precursor IONS level. And we are working currently, uh, I'm really sorry, my PowerPoint is a bit crazy. So we are working currently to make also modules at the peptidoform level 
and at the protein group level. But for now, we really look at the quantification of the precursor ions. And we work with data that had been published in 2022. So there are two conditions that are compared, and each one is a mix of three species. And uh, basically, we know the relative quantities of the species in this, in these conditions, A and B. And based on this, we can we basically know what is the expected ratio uh, between condition B and A for a given species. So we can calculate uh, the error between the measured ratio of each uh, precursor ion and the expected ratio. And uh, with this, we can plot um, uh, the plot that I will show you uh, for this module. So in each module, you should have some data available for everybody to download. And in this module, it consists in the six row files and the FASTA file. And the FASTA file contains the three species and also a set of contaminants so that all the users would use exactly the same FASTA file for the same row files. And users can download uh, the data available in the module and apply their own analysis workflow. And then they take the output of their workflow at the peptide ion level, and they send it back to uh, ProtoBench. And currently in ProtoBench, um, we, we can basically have for upload a set of specific tools that we pass. And, uh, it includes a MaxQuant AlphaPept, uh, FragPipe, Proline, Sage. Uh, there is also a custom um, format that is passed, uh, and we are working on others. But basically, all the output that you upload in ProtoBench should contain uh, modified sequences, charge states, and the ion relative quantities. And we basically take this table. And then we calculate metrics that we plot in a single plot that contain all the outputs that the community has sent for public submission to ProtoBench. And you can see for this module, it is the number of quantified peptide ions on the uh, vertical axis and <clears throat> the um, absolute difference between measured and expected ratio on the horizontal axis. And in this plot, it's not the most recent. Uh, we have new points now. But basically, you can see in small the public runs, so the ones that have been previously submitted by others in ProtoBench. Uh, and they have uh, there are different tools on different parameters. So you can see that they don't all um, quantify the same number of ions with the same accuracy. And we always have then a bigger point that is the result that you uploaded locally on your uh, computer. So this is great, uh, but you can do more. And we hope a lot of people will do more. It's make it public. Uh, so you can public submit publicly the output of your uh, workflow so that everybody can have access to it. But in order to do that, you need to provide uh, metadata that will contain all the information regarding the tool you used and the parameters that you selected so that it is completely transparent to the community and can be reproduced. And uh, right now, we accept for public upload MaxQuant, Proline, and Sage. And we are working hard to have soon FragPipe, i 2 Quark, and we are also working on WombatP. And basically, the user can uh, put the parameter file that would be, for example, the MQPAR for MaxQuant here. And also, we have some space for users to comment and add information in a free text format if there are parameters that uh, are missing from their parameter files or if they want to kind of flag their run in any way. And then they basically send it. And some maintainers will have a look at the submission and uh, accept the new data point for the figure. So basically, with ProtoBench, everybody can privately plot their own comparisons. They can uh, add a reference workflow to ProtoBench. So by that, I mean a public submit publicly uh, their output with the parameter file. And we also want to to make available to the community all the data that is uh, submitted to ProtoBench so that anybody can download it and then analyze it to understand why the search outputs are different uh, or look into the data the way they want. And also, we want to have as many modules as needed by the community, so everybody is welcome to propose new modules. 
And um, we have thought within the group of uh, what modules, so how to propose modules and what the module life cycle should be. So you can see it here. So the idea is that if you want a new module to be developed in Protobench, you can basically send a proposal. So I have to say this is uh, the ID. We haven't yet implemented it. So we don't have the place for you to do that right now, but soon, hopefully it will, it will be there. A place where you can send a proposal with a description of your module, its aim and uh, everything we need to understand it and, um, and discuss it uh, with the community. And it should be assigned to an editor that would be a protobench maintainer uh, who would be responsible for sending it to external reviewers that would be of course suggested by the people proposing the module. And the idea is to have a completely open and public, public review process uh, and the community can also of course um, um, discuss with the reviewers the module that once accepted would be implemented and the implementation doesn't have to be done by the people proposing the module. It can also be done by us or by other people interested in helping. And so once the module is accepted, implemented, then it enters a beta stage. That's the state of the module I presented. Uh, so basically it's available to the community, but we have to be a bit careful. Uh, we can realize that we made mistakes or change a bit the figures or the metrics if some people um, realize that we could do better. Uh, and then uh, once we are happy with it, um, we can put the module live, which would be accessible without restriction. A module can be archived if we think that uh, there are better ways to compare uh, the same thing. We can basically freeze the module so that all the points are still there and the module is available to the community. But we think that a better module is available and uh, we basically want the people to use the newer uh, module. And the module can also be withdrawn if we think that it's flawed and we realize that actually it is misleading or that it shouldn't uh, be available to the community and then we can remove it. So here is a slide where I basically show the different modules that are in preparation. Um, so we are working, as I said, on modules for the quantification of peptidoforms on protein groups that would be very similar to the one I presented and with the same raw files. This is very much work in progress and should be available soon. We also want to have quantification of DIA data. And for this, we started working uh, with uh, data published in 2021 uh, using the same type of metrics as the one in the module I presented. Um, and we are working on external estimation of false identification proportion on DDA data, looking into entrapment strategies. And we also are working on a module for target decoy validation visualization using the QQ plot. Um, but of course, uh, we are open to suggestions. So you can propose a new module. So as I said, it is uh, there is no real official way to do so now. So you can directly contact us. Um, I've started discussions so that uh, what we discuss is completely open to the community. So you can find us in the discussions in our GitHub page. So you will see it's only me there. Uh, I am the only one who is discussing with myself for now. But basically what I put there is what we discuss in our regular meetings. And if you want to be part of those regular meetings, please join us. Uh, we have meetings every two weeks. And uh, to join us, you can join UBKMS, going to the websites and click on the button, join UBKMS. And then uh, we basically communicate through our Slack channel in uh, the project Protobench channel. If you don't want to do this, but you are still interested, you can also send an email to the Protobench email address which actually redirects uh, your email to me or Robin. You can also contact us directly if you want to. And it can be to ask questions, to participate, to propose modules or anything. We are he super happy to, uh, to listen to what you have to say and we can even organize a meeting. So that's all. <laughs> and um, thank you for your attention. 
I will now um, give the room to Robin, uh, who is going to do a live demo. Yes, so you should be able to see my screen and hear me. Okay, so I'm actually going to do three parts, uh, which I think are quite crucial to Proteobench and maybe a little bit of a teaser at the end. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is actually browse some public results. These are public in the sense that we submitted them. Um, but in a sense, it would work the same way, of course, if you would submit data. Um, I will also submit some results, in our case, actually from Alphabet. And finally, we will also make a first submission. Um, this is a real example. So hopefully, um, everything will go well. And we will actually even approve the uh, submission. So a little bit about what we're going to see in the web interface. Of course, when we view the results on the public data, we will just see all of the data points that are already submitted. We can play with them a little bit. You will see later. Then if we're going to compare results, um, I've done the search already, uh, but we're going to take the results from this search and then plot them. Um, so when we're actually doing this plotting, we're really going to the core of Proteobench in terms of the code. So we're looking a little bit under the hood of the car. So what we're doing here is mainly parsing the file. So we take the result file and a TOML file. The TOML file actually describes how the file is formatted. So from this, we actually generate sort of a intermediate file that is the same for everything. From this intermediate file, we can calculate all of the necessary metrics and we can also plot the results. Now, finally, as Marie already indicated, you can also submit results so that they are viewable for everyone. And in order to do this, um, you need to upload some parameters and you also need to click on submit, of course. So when you click on submit, uh, a pull request will be made by Proteobot. Um, so Proteobot is our nice robot that takes care of all of the pull requests and public submissions. And from there on, we can approve these submissions. So let's try to do the first thing. So we're just going to look at some of the public results. So this is the home page. We'll then go to the results page that is shown here. So on the top, you have a description of the module. We have a description of all of the files that are necessary. And also when you click on to the documentation, I believe it's here, it also describes on how to run these files. But we're not interested in running for now. We're just going to look at the results, which are not looking good. So I'm just going to go to the public server. This is always the danger of doing a demo, right? Um, so we're going to the public server and here everything is all right. So that's a good thing. Locally, it's not running. Uh, I thought locally was going to be safer, but clearly it is not. Um, but here you can actually see the public results. So we can see some data points here. So all of these points are actually individual workflow runs that people have run. Um, the different colors indicate the different search engines. And what you can also see is that we can interact with it. So we can say like the minimal ion quantification should be six, for example. So you can put this to six and then the points will jump, of course. So that means that we get a little bit less um, uh, number of precursors quantified, but it's more accurate. You can also highlight points if you want to. So if we click here, then it should be highlighting one of the points. Um, so, we will now actually already go to submitting one. I've actually restarted the local server. Um, so we are going to upload uh, a result file. So in this case, it's actually from Alphapet. So I'll go to the peptide result, which is this file right here. So I'm going to upload this one. I'm going to click on Alphapet. And I'm not going to give any additional parameters. I'm just going to keep them default for now. So now when we click on parse and bench, it will get analyzed. And hopefully, 
the point will show up. This might take a little bit because it's about 220 megabytes of data. So it will need to crunch through a little bit. So yeah, here we have the results. So we have the intermediate file that I talked about earlier. So you can also download this um, and it shows here the head of that file. Then some of the description of this file and here also some plots that are specific to the individual upload. So you can see that we have E. coli, um, human and yeast, and there are different quantities in which they are expected. So as you can see, most of them are semi-correct. We can see some of the E. coli is actually overlapping a little bit with the human, but overall this doesn't look too bad. Um, and then on the right, we see for condition A and B also what the um, coefficient of variation is. This is also a nice individual plot, but what we really want to do is look, of course, how it looks compared to the rest. As you can see, we do a little bit worse uh, than the rest, which is fine. Um, ProtoBench is not really about performing better than anybody else. It's really about knowing the place with the other points and uh, knowing the context in which you uh, apply your workflow, how it performs with these metrics. So um, you can see that the point that we submit is this a little bit thick. Um, the rest is still the same. We can interact with it just so like we did before. If we go to at least one uh, quantified, um, we can do that. Uh, now it quantifies a little bit more, as you can see. Um, but the accuracy is a little bit lower, maybe. Overall, we're not doing that, so that's good. So I think that this is ready for a submission. Um, so in order to do a submission, there's, of course, quite a bit of documentation, but also we can upload the YAML file. So the YAML file for AlphaPet is used to put some of the search parameters in. So we can put that in here. It extracts all the parameters. I can put anything in here that I wanted to. Um, actually, I'm not going to put anything in here because I actually want this to be a real submission. So everything should already be in there. I confirm that everything is correct. And I also say that I really want to upload it. So once you do this, essentially it becomes public. Um, it will make a pull request. You should also get balloons at some point. I believe that we're getting balloons. Yes, there we are. And a real balloon from here. Yes. Um, so we get balloons and it's a success and it made a pull request. So we can go to this pull request and there it actually um, says what we edit. So we edit uh, one new run um, that should be here at the end. Yes, here it is. So this run got edited. And we can approve this pull request if we want to. We can also say if there's something wrong, people that need to vet these kinds of pull requests, we can add comments here. And once it gets added, it will be visible in this um, overview for everybody to see. So I tried to teach you a little bit at the beginning with one extra thing. And let's see if that will work. Um, so one of the things is this is the web interface of course of your bench, but the idea is of course that the web interface is one way of interacting with it. Um, so in the background, we've also done a lot of Sage runs and we want to, co to compare all of these and Proteo Bench actually makes this really easy. So we install the Proteo Bench package, we import some things. This is a little bit more for the advanced sort of power user, of course, but you can see the power a little bit about interfacing with this. Uh, we get the data for the different searches. Um, we extract all of the data that we need. We parse all of the data and load them in the correct modules. And then finally, we can start uh, plotting everything. Uh, so with about 10 to 20 lines of code, we can compare uh, 60 different Sage runs with different parameters, as you can see here. So all of these were run with different parameters. You can see how they perform differently. So this might also be a great way to evaluate for yourself what would be good parameters, what would be bad parameters, uh, what would be metrics that you care about and those kinds of things. Okay, so I think that is it for the live demo.
Uh, and I think we can now move on to the Q&A section. Hopefully there are some questions. Yes, perfect. Thank you so much for the presentation, Marie, and also for the for the live demo. Uh, we have some uh, questions popping in. So the first one is from Kevin about FDR. So he says, uh, he asks, uh, is FDR calculated within Prodeo Bench? So that the same FDR uh, calculation is applied for all the tools. Um, I can I can answer this, but please in the panel you you feel free to answer if you want, right? So this would be for a module in preparation where we want to compare to basically estimate uh, FD the the false discovery proportion, so the proportion of uh, falsely identified um, ions. Uh, in the tools in the same way you are right. It's exactly what we have in mind. So the idea would be that the users can send us their output and that we, so the idea that we have right now, uh, have after giving it a lot of thought, would be to have some untrapped sequence in the FASTA file. So we would provide a FASTA file that contains all the sequence in the, in the runs, but also additional sequences that were not present and that if they are matched to an ion, we can flag as wrong identifications. And this is commonly used quite uh, quite a bit. And we would like to do that to be able to use exactly the same strategy to estimate false discovery in a different output. So I can tell you that there are lots of debates when we talk about this because uh, not all of us agree, uh, but still we think that it would be beneficial for the community to have something like that. Uh, and we are very interested in seeing how it looks. And specifically, I know that some of us are interested in looking on how it looks when we do also with scoring. Um, and maybe for the current uh, module, it is the case that uh, we assume that everything that you put in is essentially correct. Um, so we will filter out uh, decoys, of course, but it needs to be 1% filtered. Or not. I mean, then you will see that the performance is likely not going to be very good. But yeah. uh, all right. So next question uh, is from Julian. Uh, can can I also submit the post processed with the for with custom script, or is it only possible to benchmark results generated from um, different parameters from a search engine? So you can do anything you want locally. Clearly, you can upload any type of output that would be compatible with our inputs. So if you choose, for example, the custom output, which is a tab delimited file, you can completely um, upload something that you have pre-processed. So locally, you can look at how it performs compared to the public points. But publicly, we don't advise to do that. And we ask people to send the parameter files associated with their runs in order to have the full process of what they did in the parameter files. And so if you change stuff that are not in your parameter files, we have no way to know. And then it can become very messy. Uh, so we really don't advise to do that. Um, that being said, I suspect that pre-processing would be to look maybe it would be very interesting to look at in maybe different modules. The module that we have right now, it's very basic to look at the differences in quantification of peptide ions. Uh, so that may not be the right module to look into preprocessing such as, uh, I don't know, it could be what you're saying maybe is missing value replacement or normalization. For this, we think that we would need dedicated modules. Um, I hope I answered your, your question. Okay, so let's take the next one. Uh, which metrics are currently supported both in the web interface and in the Python package? So currently we only support the ones that you've seen. Um, so these are for individual points. You can see the coefficient of variation. You can also see the error, of course, with the expected ratios. Um, and of course, the number of quantified precursors, precursor ions, I have to say. Um, 
the thing is we also want to make some of the submitted files or search results eventually public we don't have a plan for this yet but currently we pre-calculate everything on the server and everything that goes public is pre-calculated so this would not allow us for the other data points to recalculate for different metrics so we're really limited to what we define let's say um, the moment that we decide to also include the search files uh, and make them public, of course, we can recalculate metrics. Um, but this is still not something that has been decided yet. And maybe people would also not like this. I think it should be very clear also to people who make a public submission, what is made public and what is not. So next question is, uh, can we also submit the results from commercial tools like uh, Pauser, I think it's called? <laughs> uh, and if so, which uh, what columns are needed in the matrix? Sorry, uh, yes. Uh... <laughs> The idea is that you can, uh, and actually the tools that are missing are missing because we haven't started working on it. Uh, also because we are completely biased to the tools we use ourselves and we are interested in, but we are really uh, open to suggestions. So please send us messages uh, to ask for new tools and then we can it actually happened uh, so i2 i2 mass crack is uh, something we are working on right now and also sage it's it's tools that the developers contacted us to add them uh, and it can also be users uh, really we are open to it we just need discussion so that we understand exactly how the tools work and how we can uh, pass the files etc but please contact us if you want to add passer that would be great and i do think there's room of course in the custom format the only problem that i do see is that we do not currently support parsing of the parameter files uh, for a custom format so that would mean that you cannot make public submissions um, but again if this is really something that you're interested in uh, we can have a look at this and maybe um, I know that there's a lot of talk about um, SDRF uh, right now and SDRFs are really great to for example also put in search parameters I think so I believe that even Frack Pipe currently supports this and maybe something like an SDRF in the custom format would be really nice um, All right, so next question is, um, when should we impute null values before normal normalization and log transformation or after? And what's the best way to do it? Uh, what expression potential is ideal? So right now, we really don't have a module that would help you with this. Um, the module we have is designed to compare the quantification accuracy of the ions, but really not designed to test such things. Uh, we really think that we it would be brilliant to have a module dedicated to missing value replacement. Uh, and that would help us to start answering those questions that you have. Um, but we would need to give it a lot of thought because uh, so what data would we work with? We need the ground truth or would be would it be in silico data? What would we measure as um, metrics to basically compare the different uh, strategies, uh, et cetera? All these questions need to be discussed. And I think Protobench is the place to discuss these questions. We just haven't started tack tackling this problem. Okay, so next question is about the contribution, I think. So would it be, uh, the question is, would it be possible to upload any accepted mod modules and can these modules be programmed in any language? So I think it would be great if people indeed contribute modules. I do think it would be better if they fit in with the whole flow of the program, of course. So there is a little bit of a, um, structure in how we make these kinds of modules. Uh, so you can have a look at the code. We have um, specific code templates and class templates there that you can follow. Um, I also think it would be really nice if you um, then attend a meeting, for example, to also gauge the, the interest and 
uh, maybe feedback from the other people within Proteo Bench. Um, now, in terms of what language, I do think that we're going to be limited to Python uh, currently. Now, the thing is, if you make Python bindings to any other programming language to write the module in, I'm not necessarily against it. But again, this is a, another layer of complexity that maybe we don't want to get into. Um, so I would say for simplicity's sake, uh, let's stick with Python for now. Yes. So I think this is the last question. So please, if you have any more questions, uh, drop it in the Q&A. Uh, but uh, yes, the last question for now is, uh, is there a way to avoid uh, overfitting? And uh, if the benchmarking data sets and metrics are then publicly available and then limited, people could be keep uh, testing and tuning their tools to fit uh, their results as best possible to the, this specific test. Uh, and and unless a specific test set of data sets, yeah, that was long, but uh, yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, so we don't have any way to. Uh, so people, please stop me if uh, you disagree. Right, we don't have any way to avoid overfitting, and that's something we discussed uh, at length uh, with the people in the group. Uh, so the way we see it uh, is that with Protobench, the first thing that we think is quite cool is that you can reproduce as much as you want one run. So if there is a point that interests you or like that looks weird or suspicious, you can always rerun it uh, with the same set of parameters that has been uploaded for the public release. So that's one thing. Um, and then for the overfitting itself, um, the idea would be to have several modules to look at the same thing with different types of data. That's where that's the answer we have to your question, and we didn't find anything better right now. But uh, it's true that the set of files that we use currently for the module I showed you are specific, and uh, you can totally uh, perform well with your tool if you play around and you find the best parameters for these files. So if we have a module that is very similar with another type of raw files, then you can compare the same pipelines and workflows with the same set of parameters with this diff within these different modules. And then it should prevent, uh, or maybe it doesn't prevent it, but at least it makes it easy to catch uh, this kind of phenomenon. So that's, uh, if I haven't forgotten anything, that's our answer to this. I think you can also see that in deep learning, right? So you have these benchmark data sets um, and you can clearly see that sometimes there are models that overfit to these um, quite clearly. But it doesn't mean that these benchmark data sets are completely useless, um, especially not because it's some it, it's pretty hard to optimize for several data sets that all have their own characteristics. And I think this is also what Marie pointed out in the sense that if we have several modules that, for example, measure sort of the same thing for a different data set. It's going to be really hard to overfit for both of them at the same time. But completely going against it is maybe not uh, something that is possible. OK. Thanks a lot for, for asking so many questions. Do we have any final questions dropping in? No, it doesn't seem like that. So then uh, we're going to just thank you for the webinar. And uh, please, uh, I have prepared like a feedback form. And there you can also, uh, I have put in some boxes where you can put in your own suggestions. If you have some ideas of analysis and different modules that you would like to see uh, inside of Proteo Bench. So please let us know what you think and uh, give us uh, give us some new ideas and some, some inspiration. So yeah, thank you so much for presenting both Marie and Robin. And thanks to, to everyone else also for being present here today. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for listening in, everyone who asked questions and and uh, and listened and was here today. And with that, uh, we're finished. Goodbye and thank you very much, Caroline. That was great. Thank you.